Hello everyone, today we will talk about an important concept that is usually studied within semantics and pragmatics. It is reference. In this presentation, we will try to uh, give an introduction to this concept. We will try to define it. Then uh, we will list some characteristics of reference. Uh, after that, uh, we will explain the major types of reference. Then we will uh, talk about referring expressions and reference in general and show the main characteristics of these two terms with giving examples. Now, uh, reference as a term is usually interchangeably explained uh, with diaxis because diaxis is actually uh, a, 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 a pragmatic uh, term which means pointing to. So reference and diaxis are interchangeably explained within the fields of uh, semantics and pragmatics. So uh, when we say reference, we, uh, we, we, we immediately think of semantics. And in the same time, we think of pragmatics. So first, according to Palmer, uh, 1981, reference is distinguished from the notion of sense. So first of all, it's very important to make a difference between these two. As we know that sense is actually the relationship between linguistic items themselves, the, the linguistic elements in the same sentence. Uh, while reference is the relationship between linguistic elements and non-linguistic elements in the world of experience or uh, outside language. So um, for uh, sense, we say it is uh, an intralinguistic relation, while reference is a kind of extralinguistic relation. So this is the main uh, difference between these two terms. Now, if you take an example, uh, tulip, for example, uh, has a sense um, with the word flower. When this word is used in the language, we say that a tulip or any other kind of flower like um, roses, daffodils, um, sunflowers, etc., are all uh, carrying um, senses of what? Of flowers. This is according to the sense relation. While um, pragmatically, uh, the same flower, uh, for example, tulip, can can refer to the object of tulip in the world of experience. So when we say reference, um, we mean the uh, relation between uh, linguistic elements, words, phrases, and sentences in language, this is on one side, and um, with the non-linguistic elements, I mean uh, objects, entities, uh, things in general, in, 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 in the world of experience or outside the language. Now, um, you can see that the, there is a very simple difference between sense and reference. Uh, when we say sense, we deal with relationships inside the language. Uh, Why reference, we deal with the relationships between language and the world. Okay, in the referential approach of semantics and pragmatics, um, two important scholars um, who are British scholars, Ogden and Richards in 1923, in their book, The Meaning of Meaning, actually, this is a very famous book, they pointed out that reference is a psychological process. The, uh, and that reference themselves may be psychological. So, when you refer to something, an entity, whether inside the language or outside the language, I mean, in the world of experience, there is a kind of psychological relationship between words, phrases, and sentences on one side and objects, entities, and things on the other side. So the relationship between reference and reference is clear in, in their semiotic theory. Uh, in their semiotic theory, they uh, put a semiotic triangle, as you see on the screen, there is a symbol and reference. The relationship between symbol and referent 
is something indirect or indirect. I mean, uh, you cannot refer to the referent in the world of experience unless you think of it, unless you have a reference, unless you have a concept in your mind. So this is the general framework of their theory, which is the semiotic uh, theory. Now, Matthews 1997 states that reference is the relation between a part of an utterance and an individual or set of individuals that is identified. This is a, um, a definition by the writer Matthews here. Uh, two important things are referred to in this definition. We have referring expression, we will come to talk about them later, uh, which mean a part of an utterance. Uh, the, the, the linguistic elements that we use in our everyday language to refer to things uh, outside the language. So we have referring expressions and reference. Reference uh, mean or refer to any individual or set of individuals. So these are what, these are general entities, general objects, general places in the world of experience. Uh, we have an example here. Mela Jaziri is a Kurdish poet. In this example, the linguistic forms, noun phrases, uh, if, you, if you say it in, in, uh, uh, grammatically, noun phrases like Mela Jaziri, it's a noun phrase, and a Kurdish poet is another noun phrase, they are considered referring expressions. So they are grammatical elements, grammatical items used uh, as tools to refer to other things outside the language. So the other things that are referred to outside the language are any individual or any thing. Here in this example, the individual that is referred to is what is Mala Jaziri? So Mala Jaziri is a referent <clears throat> and it's in the same time uh, a referring expression. So the referring expression of Mala Jaziri uh, refers to an individual, to a referent in the world of experience. It's something physical actually. We will come to talk about these characteristics right now. Now, uh, according to Leon's Cradler and Cruz, um, who all of them agree on the on, on some characteristics on, on some unified characteristics of reference. According to them, reference can be either generic or non-generic. So <clears throat> there are references which are general, and some others are not general. Um, <clears throat> reference can either be specific or non-specific. Um, reference can either be definite or indefinite. For example, the cat is a nice pet. A cat is a nice pet. Cats are nice pets. According to Cruz, to Southern, the entity cat in all these sentences uh, is a reference to a class of reference. I mean, uh, cat. So, um, while in contrast, the following examples do not have generic reference. A cat is lying on the mattress. If you say a cat is lying on the mattress and cats are lying on the mattress. So what is the difference between if you say, if you use uh, a cat as a singular form of, of the noun phrase and cats as a plural form, are they generic or non-generic? Are they specific or non-specific? Here, the entity cat is specified by the experience of objects. So the surrounding grammatical elements, the surrounding linguistic elements in the same sentence can make the, the reference, the thing that you refer to, whether specific or non-specific. So the mattress here is is a surrounding object, is a surrounding entity that is referred to uh, in, according, in accordance to uh, the referent cat. Here, the object of cat is something not predicted of the whole class referred to. 
So there is a proposition about this or that group of cats or about any particular individual cat. So a cat is lying on the mattress. Um, a cat here is a noun phrase, which is something indefinite, right? You don't know which cat. Uh, is it my, my cat or your cat or somebody else's cat? Cats are lying on the mattress. This is again controversial. What group of cats do you refer to? Are they black cats or white cats or yellow cats? So you don't know that. Uh, it depends actually on the situation you say in these utterances. To identify whether a referent has a specific or non-specific reference, um, it is important to understand the discourse rather than the expression of the reference. As we said, uh, the relationship between uh, um, uh, referring expressions and reference in, in, in the context depends on the context. So we say reference is something, is, is a pragmatic notion here because it is context dependent. Uh, look at the example, I want to buy a car with two doors. So the definite noun phrase, a car, though, uh, uh, th though it is indefinite here, is used specifically. Why? Uh, because it implies the existence of an object that has two doors. In contrast, it is used non-specifically if no presupposition or implication exists. If you don't show the type of car, if you don't uh, tell uh, the audience how many doors the car has, it will be something non-specific, okay? So the audience, the hearer or listener may ask you some questions like uh, what type of car or which car uh, or, or what color of the car you are talking about. So this is the main difference between whether a referent is specific or non-specific. Now compare the following examples. If you say we have a dog, and if you say we'd like to have a dog, it is clear that in these two sentences, the same indefinite noun phrase, a dog is used, but in the first example, um, it has a specific reference. We have a dog. We, the family, we, the family members, know what dog we are talking about. So it is something specific. While in the second example, we'd like to have a dog or we'd like to buy a dog. Uh, this is a, a kind of, there is a kind of non-specific reference. Why? Because uh, up to the moment of speaking, we, we don't know what type of dog we, were, we, will, we will have or what type of dog we will buy. It is, it is not clear and not specific. Now, uh, Cradler argues that any referring expression is definite. Uh, this is a general rule. If the referent uh, from the physical social context is identifiable for both speaker and hearer. Um, look at the example. I've, I've got the book. There is the definite article the used in the sentence, the book. Here the referent the book is definite. If the referring expression is fixed, uh, I mean a part of the address is general knowledge. There is a kind of uh, mutual understanding between me, the speaker, and you as the hearer. We know what book we refer to. I have got the book. So the book is clear. It's something definite. Now, uh, she went to visit a doctor. Now, the indefinite article A is used here, a doctor. In this example, the noun phrase a doctor indicates that this doctor is a part of a larger group of doctors. So uh, the audience doesn't know which doctor uh, you want to visit. It is indefinite. Now, let us um, talk about the main types of reference, depending on factors like the situation, the connection, or the relationship between the speakers and hearers, 
the speaker's intentions and beliefs, reference can be classified into different types. Now, the main classification we follow in this presentation is by Halliday and Hassan, 1994. According to these writers, reference can be classified into two major types, which are the situational reference or exephora and textual reference or endephora. Now, each of these major types of reference can be classified into sub other categories. The exephora can be classified into, though it is not mentioned in this table or figure, uh, the exephora can be classified into homophora and inference. Now, we will come to talk about these two terms and give you examples. Endophora, on the other hand, can be classified into anaphora and cataphora. Anaphora simply means, um, means, um, uh, means referring to something backward, while cataphora is a kind of forward reference. Right. The first uh, category or type of reference is uh, exephora. Exephora, or sometimes called situational reference or exephoric reference, these are uh, terms which have the same meaning. Um, it is the, the real world reference. So exephora is more pragmatic than the, uh, than the endophora. Exephora is actually a reference to the, to, the, to the real world, to outside the language. This is a type of reference outside the text and language. Now, if you will read this such example, they are late again. If they don't come on time, we will miss it. So in, this, in these two sentences, um, they has an exophoric reference. Why or how? Because this this pronoun refers to some physical reference uh, people in the real world. The same is true with the referring expression it. So it can be said that exophoric reference occurs when a word or phrase refers to something outside the discourse, to something outside the discourse or outside the language. Now, as we said, exophora can be either homophora or inference. Now, let's give you examples. Not mentioned by Halliday and Hassan, two other types of reference can be added to exophora, as we said, homophora and inference. They are both semantically and pragmatically used to refer to entities outside the text. Now, homophora, on one hand, is a self specifying reference to an item which is usually unique. How hot the sun is today. Don't be angry at the boy. Now in these two examples, the sun is unique. We have one sun, we have one moon. So we say uh, the sun, we say the moon, we say the earth. So these are definite expressions and they are unique. Don't be angry at the boy. Uh, again, the boy in this sentence is unique. How? Uh, it can be derived through grammar. They van uh, by, they, they, they can be interpreted, sorry, they can be interpreted through the immediate situational context. So there is a boy, it is now and it is definite by both the speaker and the hearer. That is why we consider the boy, the book, the tree, the table, the TV, um, as something unique if, if the context is an immediate situational context. I mean, if it happens in the moment of speaking. So this is what we mean by it. Now, inference, on the other hand, according to Yule 1996, um, it is uh, su a successful reference is necessarily collaborative with both the speaker and the listener having a role in thinking about what the other has in mind. So we have some example. Where is my Chomsky? Uh, here, <clears throat> Chomsky as a reference 
um, doesn't refer to uh, the real person, the individual, no. Uh, we mean by Chomsky as the book by Chomsky, the book written by Chomsky. It is the electricity. Sometimes in daily conversations, somebody knocks the door and you just open it. You say, it is the electricity. That means what? The referent is the man who distributes electricity resets. We saw Shakespeare in London. It doesn't mean that Shakespeare uh, <clears throat> was in London and you, you saw him yesterday or last week. No, Shakespeare died uh, a long time ago. So we mean by Shakespeare here, is the play or any play written by Shakespeare, right? So this means that names of things can be used to refer to people and the opposite is true. I mean, the names of people can refer to things. Now, pragmatically, uh, if reference is done by and depends on speaker's goal, inference is listener's task to discover the relationship between expressed entities with the words. This means that transferring the original meaning or information is essential, is an essential fact of inference. There, there, there should be a kind of collaboration of mutual understanding between the speaker and the hearer. Now, let us look at these two examples. Titanic was in its maiden voyage. Now in this word, in this sentence, sorry, uh, Titanic refers to a ship. In the second example, Titanic was the best in romantic category. That means it's a movie. <coughs> now, the meaning of the word Titanic in, in the above examples have different interpretations depending on the surrounding linguistic material. I mean, the core text in the uh, utterances. We will come to talk about the context uh, later. Now let's come to the textual or uh, uh, textual reference or endophora. Uh, it is the reference in the text actually. An endopha is the relation in which the anapha or, or katapha and its antecedent are within what is said or written. This means that in endophoric reference the identity of presuming item can be retrieved from elsewhere within the text itself. If we have a sentence, the endophoric reference is within a one single sentence or across sentences. Now we have these two sentences as an example. Sarah is clever. She is my sister. Now, the referring express, expression, she, which is a pronoun, a personal pronoun, refers to, refers back to its antecedent, Sarah, in the text. As we said, um, endophora can be either anaphora or cataphora. We give you examples. Depending on the position of the antecedent in the text, endophora can be classified into anaphora and cataphora. According to Quirk and his followers or colleagues, uh, anaphoric reference is used where the uniqueness of reference of a phrase is supplied by information given somewhere earlier in the discourse. A man is coming, he is very gentle, now the pronoun, the personal pronoun, he refers back to the noun phrase, a man. This is called anaphoric reference. It's a backward reference, okay? The, the, uh, the reason um, not to repeat the same noun phrase is to avoid a repetition. This is one important reason for anaphoric reference. Matthews uh, defines anaphora as the relation between a pronoun and another element or antecedent in the same sentence or across sentences. That supplies it. Refer Here, referring expressions used for anaphoric reference are um, synonyms and hyponyms, 
can be uh, good tools to make anaphoric reference. For example, my son likes to play with toys, but he is mad about guns. Guns are themselves as toys, so they are synonyms. They refer to the same thing, the same reference. Pronouns, for example, he is always on time. He refers back to the student. Sorry, uh, here it's a mistake. The student, not the students. Definite article that um, refers back to the indefinite noun phrase in a preceding sentence. So these are good tools for making <clears throat> anaphoric reference. Now, regarding catephora, the notion of catephora is less common in use than that of anaphora. Catephora is the relation between an anaphoric expression and an antecedent that comes later. Thus, catephora refers to um, entities that are mentioned later in the discourse. So we can say that catephora is a forward reference. For example, the house that John built has two rooms. And generally in relative clauses, there is a kind of cataphoric reference. So the house, which house that John built, that John built uh, is a relative clause that comes after the noun phrase, the house. So we say that John built and the house has a connection of cataphora, has a cataphoric reference, right? Some other examples, uh, when she prepared the dinner, Sarah invited her friends. Now, Sarah is definite. She is a personal pronoun, not definite. Now, she refers forwardly to Sarah. In the second example, he uh, refers forwardly to the teacher. If you need one, uh, there is a towel in the uh, top drawer. So one here, uh, refers to the indefinite noun phrase, a towel. Now, what about referring expressions? We have been discussing referring expressions within the explanation of reference, the characteristics of reference, the types of reference in general. Philosophers, linguists, semanticists, and pragmatists have found it hard to agree on a precise definition for reference, but intuitively reference is the speaker's use of words to point to. That is why we said there is a connection between uh, reference and the axis, and they are both studied within both semantics and pragmatics. Um, this means that to direct the hearer's attention to something uh, or to enable the hearer to identify something any word or phrase used by communicators to refer to something is a referring expression. So any pronoun, any noun phrase, anything that, any linguistic element that can be used uh, as a tool to refer to something is considered a referring expression. Now, according to you, the ability to identify intended reference depends on what? on our understanding of the referring expression. So what type of referring expression we use determines the, the, our understanding of, of communication. Now this expression is even interpreted more successfully when it comes in a linguistic context. I mean, uh, the cool text, the surrounding uh, context in the same uh, a, a sentence. Now, referring expressions simply can take the following forms, as we said, proper nouns like Ali, John, Sarah, and any, any proper name, nouns, noun phrases like river, a car, the tree, etc. Pronouns like he, she, it, myself, and so on. The condition that makes an expression be a referring expression depends on what? On whether the speakers and hearers have the same perception of the referent. So as we said, there should be a kind of mutual understanding, mutual background belief between both the hearer and the speaker. 
For example, Aphrodite was the goddess of beauty. Now, if the hearer does not know who Aphrodite is, then this proper name is not referring to anything. So we cannot say that Aphrodite is a referring expression. Uh, regarding reference, um, we have some examples and we come to the end of our presentation. Cradler provides a comprehensive account of different types of reference used by a language to identify entities in the well. Now, reference can either be unique or non-unique. Reference can either be concrete or abstract. They can either be countable or non-countable. Now, consider the following sentences. The moon goes around the earth. Now, in this sentence, the moon and the earth are reference, but what characteristics of reference they carry? They are unique and concrete in the same time. There is much sugar in my tea. In this sentence, sugar is another reference, is an object, is an entity in the world of experience. What characteristics of reference uh, does it carry? Sugar is non-unique, is concrete, and non-countable or uncountable. By this, we, we have come to the end of presentation. Thank you.